vigorously to get them all on the same watering schedule. Some of them are drier than they should be, but I have to be economical. Yes, my husband is rich, but buying all of this water just to mix the fertilizer and then throwing it away and mixing a whole new batch is not the tea, darling. It's not the tea. So with that being said, Behind me, I have some of the things that I will need today to um, water my plants. I'm not going to go in detail today about everything that I use. That's another video. But today, my favorite thing in the world is some good old Epsom salt or magnesium sulfate. Okay? Then I got my Better Grow Plus 2014-13. I have my Miracle Grow all purpose plant food, and I have two cow mag, baby. Yeah! So you probably sitting up here like, oh my God, he about to kill these plants, put all this fertilizer in it. But no, um, and that's the problem with the Phalaenopsis orchids. That's what I mean when I say I have to be economical because they're so sensitive. A lot of them do not like the water that comes out of the faucet. What I mean by being economical and also being aware of the sensitivities that the Phalaenopsis orchids come with is... If you live in a suburban area, they probably more than likely would not like the water that comes out of the faucet. But the cheapest thing that you can do is when it rains, and this is the summertime, some of us are getting summer showers, some of us are on fire, like Jacqueline in Canada, they up there on fire, baby. So we all gonna solicit the prayer warriors to keep them lifted in prayer, darling. Yeah! So... With that being said, I'm sorry if I'm scaring you, baby, but this is live at five, baby. We got to keep it live. The cheapest thing that you can do is go outside, collect you some rainwater, baby. But most people don't have time to collect rainwater. So the next thing that you can do is get you some good old distilled water. If you don't want to get the distilled water, then go ahead and take the chance and put the plants under the faucet. It's, it's not going to kill them. I promise you, it's not going to kill them. However, if you really want your blooms to get the best out of the bloom season, you want your leaves to be dark green and beautiful, then you want to take heed to the sensitivities of your beautiful fowl. Also, I know I got some ignorant person on my channel like, honey, this, this, this organ for dumb is why is that pato? Why is that pato in that? Okay, baby, the patho is in here because somebody wanted to know all about moss. Okay, honey. Look, I it's dirt up under the moss, but I got a layer of moss on top of it because this plant is, honey, honey, she's ready. She loves moss, okay? So, with that being said, let's go ahead and prepare the water that we're going to use today. I got different products because each of my phalaenopsis each of my plants, all of them have different needs, and I want to be sensitive to their needs, okay? So the first thing that I like to do is go ahead and get my house plants out of the way. I have more house plants than this, but I wanted to give a demonstration of the Epsom salt. And also, the um, I use faucet water with the house plants. So I got a gallon of water that I'm going to put in here, but I wanted to let you see just how much Epsom salt that I use, okay? It's kind of spread it out, but it's just a pinch, just a pinch. I'm heavy handed, but just a pinch. That's all you need, baby. And the plant food that I'm going to use is, the Miracle Grow plant food. This is how much I'm going to put 
You see that? Just a drop. That's all it needs. And I'm going to mix that into a gallon of water out of the faucet. Put it on top of the plants with the moss and keep it moving. Okay, foul pals, now that we've got my pothos out of the way, let's go ahead and prepare the water that we're going to use to first rinse out our Phalaenopsis orchids. My gallon pitcher, and this right here is just, is not distilled water. I have one gallon of distilled water under the cabinet, but this is just rainwater that I left in here for keeps. I'm doing this early in the day. Let's get it really good and wet, not wetting up the crown. I'm not going to get water in the top of it, and I'm not going to get water um, um, between the leaves. I'm going to use a measuring cup. I'm going to use a measuring cup to get the rainwater out, and we're going to go to the sink. I'll be right back, foul pals. Okay, foul pals, as you can see, hopefully you can hear it. That crunching sound is really dry. I wanted to get all of my phalaenopsis on the same watering schedule, so some of them dry out a little bit more than they should, okay? But let's go ahead and put that water in here. I'm also doing this at in the beginning of the day, bright and early. It's gonna be 95 degrees here in Alabama. So that's the perfect conditions to give your plants a good dose of fertilizer. And you don't have to worry about water just sitting in your pot because it's gonna be so hot outside. Um, the days that I water my plants, I crack the window, turn the air off. Um, that's why I do it early in the day and I just have to suffer a little while with the heat but my plants love it. They love getting that fresh air from outside. As you can see, it's still a little dry in there. You can tell by the gray roots that they needed water. So they, um, when they hydrate, they turn bright green like that. So because I see just more gray and more dryness in the pot, I'm gonna to continue to rinse out because I don't wanna burn my roots with fertilizer. And what's this on my plant, honey sunburn? We'll talk about that another time, okay? So I'm gonna to continue to gently pour the water in the plant, in the pot. Anytime that you have moss, Especially if you're a beginner, you want to make sure that you have a great pot that's going to keep all of that moss ventilated. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do I'm going to tilt it to the side and I'm going to let it drain, okay? Just like this. I'm gonna let it sit there for about probably a minute. But in the meantime, I'll do the same thing with another Phalaenopsis. This time I have a mini and it's in a glass. How in the world, no drainage hose? Honey, when you get on that level, you could do that, okay? So I'm gonna get the same rainwater. Let me move this plant to the other side. Gently pour the water on the moss. Make sure to get those roots wet because you don't wanna put fertilizer anywhere that it hasn't already been soaked in water. So the moss is just sucking it up. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see. The moss is just sucking that water up, okay? So 
you saw me put about a half a cup in here and nothing okay you can see it a little bit right there it's a little so now what i'm going to do pour it right back out okay And no, I'm not going to put this in the sink like this. I have to manually drain it, okay? So now that you get the gist of it, I'm going to do it to the rest of my plants. And I'll be back when we mix our fertilizer. Okay, five pounds. Yes, child. I'm still trying to let these plants soak. I just thought it'd be beneficial for you to see me do one of the bigger ones, especially with the area roots. I want to make sure that I get the area roots nice and wet. Look how they change colors. You see? You never want to put fertilizer on silver or gray roots. Never. Also, this rainwater that I'm using, <clears throat> I let it sit outside in the heat so it can become room temperature because the orchids hate cold water. They're from, um, people, so many people say the they're from the tropics, but the tea I heard was they was from China. So I don't know if I'm not with all that geography like Beyonce said, I don't know nothing about the algebra. I good, good, good will don't know anything about that geography. So, but I can't imagine China being tropical. I can imagine pandas and bamboo. But, hun, I can't see no tropical. But, nevertheless, they like warm water. Not cold, not hot. Please do not put ice cubes on your plants. We'll, that's a whole other video, baby. We gonna get there. Stay tuned. We gonna get there, okay? If you can't see, blame it on these GE bulbs. I spent $25 for these bulbs talking about if brightness matters and true light and HD and honey, and you can't see nothing. So. Okay, foul pals. So the next step is going to prepare the actual fertilizer for the plants that need such and such and so on. And what I mean is... As you can see, my beautiful baby, this is Groot, baby. This is Groot. I am Groot. She is still budding, and she's still forming buds. So her knees is going to be a lot different than my Phalaenopsis that doesn't have any spikes, but is growing new roots, and that is growing new leaves, okay? As you can see, I've already gone through a whole gallon of rainwater just rinsing out the plants, okay? So the next thing that I'm going to do is mix my fertilizer for all of my plants that um, that's not in bloom right now, but all of my plants that needs fertilizer for new root growth and new, um, new um, leaf growth, okay? So what I'm going to do Like I said, just a pinch of Epsom salt because some of it sticks to my hand. I get another little pinch, and I told you I'm heavy-handed. Just a little, okay? I put that in everything. So the ones that need leaves and roots, I get my cow mag. And I'm going to use about this much, a milliliter. You can use your own dosage with your plant's needs. Just a little drop. 
Okay, foul pass. Next thing I'm going to do is just shake it up. And it's ready. Now you have a lot of people out there that's measuring pHs and um, using strips and all this and that. Baby, this work is for dummies, okay? Nobody ain't got time for all that. Just don't use too much and don't do too much and your orchids will be fine. I promise to God, they will. So now that I've mixed it up, the next thing that I do is pour it in my pitcher. I use the measuring cup to scoop it out carefully and then I apply the water as necessary. Now your plants like a new fresh batch of fertilizer each and every time you fertilize them. A lot of people want to be economical by using this, the leftover fertilizer water um, to um, fertilize in another week or two, but your plants won't like it. They like fresh things. I'm trying to tell you, these Phalaenopsis orchids, they have their own needs and they own their own wants. They're like kids. They will keep you going to the store, buy new clothes. A lot of you have kids that's just going back to school, darling. So you understand that your pocket's a little thin right now because you just had to buy all of this stuff that the teachers has put on this list that you feel is unnecessary. The same thing is going to happen with your Phalaenopsis orchid. You're going to feel like it's unnecessary for you to do all of this but if you want the best blooms and you want the best f um for your baby you're going to do this stuff i promise you now this plant as you can see is still wet but it's not dripping any water it's not dripping any water all of the roots are nice and wet so it's ready to be fertilized let's go darling let's go Here we go. Nice warm water with cow mag, some Epsom salt, nice rain water with no chlorine or extra chemicals in it. So the next thing that I'm going to do, let it Swoosh all the way around. Then I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to tilt it to the side. Let the rain, um, let the fertilized water continue to drip out. And then I'm going to put it right next to a window seal that's slightly cracked. And so it'll be ventilated in that 93 degree weather. I wanted you to see me do, it, do this. As you can see, no water is coming out. And you can't really see any water that's stuck in the pot but just slightly do that any kind of way you can get any extra water out of the pot i promise you you won't hurt your phalaenopsis if you be careful your phalaenopsis would love it because they don't want to sit in a pool of water this is one of my pots that has the suction cup at the bottom so i feel a little bit better but i always just i'm so afraid of root rot so <laughs> this is extra prevention. Also, as I said, you want to make sure you don't have any water. You see just that little smudget of water. Come on, iPhone 10. That little smudget of water down there in the crown and that new growth, that alone can take your plant out. So what I do is just blow it. Some people use paper towels, but I got good enough lungs to blow it. Oh, I also got some water coming out from blowing it too, <laughs> but that's all. Now, some of you are looking at your roots like, oh my God, what is that white stuff? Oh my God, it got mold. I got mold on top of my roots. No, baby, this is what, this is what you want. Anytime that your root has found the edge of the pot or the end of wherever it is, is going to produce that so it can stick to the pot, okay? That's good. That means the orchid is starting to feel nice, safe, and secure, okay? She's not gonna be crazy having roots going around all in different directions trying to find out, okay, where am I? Now, this is a different plant. You see how these new roots 
have found the edge of the pot. Now that she knows where she is, she's gonna do everything that she can to attach herself to this pot. You see? That's just a happy fail, that's all. That's just a happy fail. Also, do you see how green, how deep green my baby is? How succulent she is? Do you see how green that new growth is? How she's standing up at attention, honey? This is Epsom salt. No leaf shine, no nothing. This is Epsom salt, baby. Epsom salt, I love it. Magnesium sulfate. Okay, fab pals, I'm back. And as you can see, I have all of this water. All of this is the same fertilized water that is going to go to the sink. So that's what I mean about being economical and just getting one thing of distilled water and doing the best that you can to collect rainwater when you can. Now, this is orchids for dummies. A lot of y'all don't have time to be getting a rainwater. I got stuff to do. I got bills to pay. Okay, like I said, if you use the water in the faucet, it's not going to kill the plant. I promise you, it won't kill the plant, okay? So now, let's prepare the water for all of my plants that are in bloom. Again... I'm going to get a pinch of Epsom salt. That was a good pinch. A pinch of my Better Grow Orchid Plus 2014-13. Now you got this measuring cup. And instead of using, using the measuring cup, I just get just a little pinch in another pinch just a little bit because I'd rather been, be safe than sorry. A lot of people say weekly, weekly. This work is for dummies. We ain't got time for no weekly, weekly. What does that mean? That means every other week, fertilize your um, orchid at a low dose. Never use the dose recommended on the packaging, okay? Use just a small dose. Then um, every... Every fourth week, I would rinse the pots out all together just to give them a fresh new start, get all of the extra salts that might have built it up in the bottom of the pot, rinse all of that out. So, um, I'm going to put just a smidget of cow mag in here too. And that is going to be all. I'm going to shake it up, put it in, then rinse all of them out with the... Everybody! Everybody. 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 